so happy we alive. Good evening, I'm Patrick Moore, and welcome to Louisville, 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 late night. I'm thrilled to be here this evening with uh, one of the uh, writers who is dear to the hearts of many people here in Kentuckyana. Someone who takes uh, reality and puts it into a uh, familiar Kentuckiana feel. That's how I would describe it. To me, reading Bob Hill's writings is uh, really an enjoyable experience. He, he writes with the simplicity of uh, Ernest Hemingway and Many of his writings are uh, have a almost mystical element to them, and to, at least to me, it's kind of like it kind of like interpreting everything through the soul, so to speak, of of uh, someone like Robert Frost or some poetic entity who is innately very much in tune, not just with the goings ons in our Louisville area, but also the uh, timeless going on of the soul of the planet, so to speak. So, um, we have a little, uh, <laughs> that's my clock. We have a little, <laughs> a little Bob clock. I never, I never learned to tell time, so we have this little bird tell us what time it is. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, we can start anywhere you like, Bob. Uh, one, one, uh, you know, before we're finished, I want to get into uh, some of the uh, books that uh, okay. that Bob Bob has written. But uh, I was uh, real surprised listening to Bob on uh, <coughs> National Public Radio or uh, Louisville Public Radio, <coughs> Louisville Public Radio. <coughs> pardon me, recently. Uh, you have a rather interesting history, uh, um, as I recall from that interview. You're you're not only a writer, but you were a basketball star. Star? No, <laughs> I was on the team. It was a slight difference. I played basketball at Rice University in, in, uh, in Houston, in Houston, Texas. But more amazingly, I graduated, which was <laughs> yeah. I got out. Getting in was fairly easy because I could play basketball. But getting out was the hard part. In high school, I played everything: track, uh, basketball, baseball. Football, golf, tennis, badminton. I yeah, I've been playing basketball at the college level is no small uh, achievement. Well, I managed to make it so. <laughs> no, I had a good time. I got a free education, and uh, I, I, uh, I grew up in Northern Illinois in a small town called Sycamore, and I went down to Rice and Houston. So I'd never been in a big town of any size on a permanent basis. So. That itself was worth the experience, just being in Houston uh -huh. at the time and uh, getting away from home and trying to grow up a little bit. Uh -huh. how, did, how did you happen to get into, into writing? That's I, I totally backed into it. I, uh, it never occurred to me as a kid I could make a living as a writer. I mean, just never. My dad was an engineer and the family always sort of said, well, gee, Bob, you can be an engineer. And I was getting C's in high school math. And then I think I ended up at Rice for that reason. It's a great engineering school. Oh yeah, right. And boy, was that a mistake. I mean, you know, there's all these kids running around slide rules on their hips. This is back before computers. And, uh, uh -huh. and I, I was an engineer for about 25 minutes. <laughs> I went over to the registrar and I got a Bachelor of Commerce, which was a special course they had for the jocks to get the athletes out with a business degree. <laughs> I never wrote a nickel for the stuff in high school or college, and then I worked for Montgomery Ward for six months and Chrysler Corporation for a couple of years. And I was 25 years old and uh, pretty miserable about where things were going, unhappy, and I just decided, what do I like to do? What, what am I fairly good at that I can turn into a living? And writing was something I'd always enjoyed, but I never had any training in it, never took any courses in it, never had any practice at it. But I just thought I'm going to be a writer. And I went to my hometown weekly in Sycamore, happened to be hiring, uh, they needed somebody, so for 105 bucks a week I became a writer. That's, that's, <laughs> that's kind of how it started. That's, 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 uh, that's quite, a, quite an achievement. In other words, you're just naturally gifted. Yeah, I think so. I was always able to uh, turn a phrase and write well on bathroom walls. You know, 
in high school, in retrospect, I think about it, and I was the guy that wrote the funny stuff and the off-the-cuff poems. And uh, But I never had that person to tell me, why don't you do this seriously for a living? It just uh, took me a while to figure it out, but I did. And there's nothing else I can do in this world except write, I don't think, to make a living. So I blundered into the right place. <laughs> I know that. Uh, I, I really like to do it. And, uh, it is a craft. It's kind of a knack and a craft both. And uh, some people, I don't put any great uh, store in it. I just think I can do that. Some people can be plumbers, electricians, handy with computers, can draw or paint or cook or so, and I, and I can write. That's what, that's what I can do. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You're, <laughs> you're one hell of a writer well, as, I, as far I, as I'm Thank you. Can well, say. I, I enjoy it. I, I really enjoy it. But. The best moments of the I, I write three times a week. I go in on I go in at like six in the morning, and uh, nobody else is around. I write till eleven or noon, and I just love it when I go in there at six six thirty in the morning and start writing. I look up, it's eleven o'clock. Uh -huh. I've just been lost in, in, in the alphabet and for three hours and trying to put sentences together. And it's just fun. I just love that part of it. I just get lost in it. You know, one, one thing I've noticed is you have, there's no, uh, almost no uh, limit to the areas of your interest. Or, or I can't hold a thought. There's been another way, <laughs> another way of saying, no, I've always had a great curiosity. I think a lot of journalists do, a lot of curiosity about different things. And I find myself, as much as anything, writing to mood. Someday I'll feel playful, someday I'll feel serious, someday I'll feel overbearing, <laughs> or whatever, but, but, uh, and I kind of write in that direction. I write how I feel. It is inside out. Writing has to be inside out. So that's what I do. And, and I just, I'm interested in almost everything except maybe politics. Uh -huh. So I have no interest in whatsoever. Yeah, that's, that's, that's and, understandable. Uh, other than that, uh, I just like it all. And I get a lot of help. Uh, I've been doing it for so long, I get wonderful phone calls from people. Uh -huh. They give me story ideas. I did one last week, one of my favorites in a long time, about a guy who vandals threw tomatoes against his garage last summer. And he took a hose and he swept it off. And then this year, here comes a seed out of a crack in his driveway, a little bitty crack about the size of a pencil. And his tomato starts coming up. It's kind of the, the ill-gotten game of, of, of this vandalism act. <laughs> and this tomato is now marching all the way through Louisville. I mean, the thing is like three feet high and 25 feet in all directions. And he's getting free tomatoes off it. So, uh, that kind of story, I just love it. It's simple, but there's still there's more to it. There's there's a message and a moral in there somehow about it. you know. As he said, I get a lot of free tomatoes, but beyond that, the fact that this act of vandalism led to this happiness for him and his neighbors, because he's giving all these things away. Wow. And it's kind of fun to write about stuff like that. Uh, I just uh, that's the kind of thing I look for. I'd much rather write about that than George Bush or Al Gore or things like that. There's enough people who want to do that, and very welcome to it. Uh -huh. I don't like that kind of stuff. I went to uh, <clears throat> Carmichael's bookstore uh, just uh, recently.